What is up, Flick fans? Welcome back to my channel. The Critics' Choice Awards has happened. We have our winners, and today we are going to talk about those winners. I need you in the comments down below. What was the most shocking win? What was the craziest moment of the night? What was the best moment of the night? I will say Brendan Fraser, his speech was incredible. I'll be honest with you. Normally, I'm watching the show with you and doing a live reaction, and we're still going to be reacting to the winners in this video, uh, but I won't be watching the ceremony with you. I've already watched it. There were a lot of things going on tonight. Some personal things have me tired, and my hair is slowly turning grayer. It'll be gray by the end of the year. But all that matters right now is who won? What are the Oscar implications? By the way, if you like this video and you want to drop that thumbs up down below, that's the best way to support this channel. Let's start with best score, and if you remember my selection for this, and I thought one of the more obvious picks of the night was Babylon. Now, I wasn't as sold on it as I was in the Golden Globes. Golden Globes, I'm like, oh, this is the most Golden Globe score. But I was kind of going off that high thinking, all right, they're going to go with the most score, meaning the score with the biggest variation of instruments and sounds and Babylon. It was all over the place, right? But in a good way. I thought the score for Babylon was really the best part of the film, in my opinion. The winner ended up being Tar. Hilder's score for Tar, which I don't even think is on the short list for the Oscars, so... You know, we look at the Critics' Choice Awards and sometimes people say, well, it's trying to be the Oscars. But the fact that Tar won tells me, no, at least not in this category. Uh, people thought it was the best. And I'm not looking down on the score for Tar, but it wasn't really in the discussion for me. I was like, it probably has the least likely chance to win. So this may be the most baffling win of the night for me, to be honest with you. I, I don't, um, okay. My personal favorite was the Batman. But it had no chance either, I'm just saying. Best song for my prediction, I almost went with the crowd, I almost chose Lady Gaga, but at the last second I said, no, I'm going with the song that I want to win, and the song that was riding that Golden Globes high. That's Not To Not To. And Not To Not To may be cruising to an Oscar at this point. The chances are looking really good. This was a huge win, not only for RRR, but for this song in general, and its chances going forward. So, uh, again, you know, you put things together and you start to see kind of where the Academy Awards is going to head, and this one is firmly in the discussion of winning Best Song. Best Foreign Language Film, I said in my predictions video, they're going to go with RRR, not only because it has no chance at the Oscars, I mean, literally, it won't get nominated, it wasn't that country's selection, uh, but because it is kind of on cloud nine right now in terms of foreign language films. All Quiet on the Western Front, in my opinion, is one of the best movies of the year, but it just hasn't had that impact other than the BAFTAs, at least the shortlist. So we'll see if it becomes more of a competition over time. Obviously, it's not going to do any damage at the Oscars, but what's going to win Best Foreign Language Film? Is it going to be All Quiet, Argentina 1985, or Decision to Leave? At this point, it's more of a toss-up than it was a few weeks ago. I'm still going with All Quiet, though. Best animated film, like I said, it wasn't much of a discussion. It's Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio or Bust at this point. Marcel had a bit of a chance. Again, I love Puss in Boots, but Pinocchio is just that movie this year. And again, and I'm looking at these winners here, and I'm saying, okay, one here, one there, and it's going to continue that trend. This is one. It's going to make its way all the way to the Oscars. And so far, other than score, it's been a pretty good night for me. Let's see how I do here. Well... Spoke too soon. I chose everything everywhere all at once. I thought, well, if it's going to win Best Picture, which it did, spoilers, uh, then people are going to say, well, since it's the best movie of all of these movies, then they could go everything everywhere. And I shouldn't have done that. I should have just said to myself, okay, they're not going to go everything everywhere. They're going to go with a different film. Obviously, that would be Banshees, right? Banshees didn't win anything, at the, right? Am I wrong about that? I don't think Banshees won one award. Uh, and that's kind of shocking for me because Banshees has a really good shot. First of all, it was beloved by critics. Second of all, I still think it has a great chance at the Oscars, but I am surprised it didn't win anything. So Glass Onion, I think, had the next best odds, but I thought for sure if it didn't go to everything everywhere, then it would go to Banshees. No, Glass Onion, which makes sense. It's more of a comedy than the other two movies. I just think the other two movies are better. At least I nailed the easy one here, right? Avatar The Way of Water won for Best Visual Effects. 
do, do I need to discuss that? Like, is there a discussion to be had here? What would have given it a run for its money? Nothing. Easy. Also, not to brag again, because I've gotten a couple wrong, but I did nail hair and makeup and costume design. For hair and makeup, I predicted Elvis would win. Now, my choice was the Batman. I just thought Colin Farrell was unrecognizable as Penguin, but the Batman winning a Critics' Choice Award... It just didn't feel like it was something that was going to happen. So Elvis felt like that movie it captured the time period. There were a lot of uh, things at play here. And then you look at Best Costume Design, and what did I say before? Uh, she is a beloved, talking Ruth E. Carter, a beloved person in the industry. But that's not the only reason, right? This was a movie that was going to be firmly in the conversation regardless. Uh, and I believe the first Black Panther kind of racked up in costume design as well. The only other movie that I thought had a chance here was maybe The Woman King, maybe Babylon, but for me, Black Panther and costume design was pretty easy to call. All right, here's where you bring me back down to earth. I had one comment in my last video that said, Austin, why didn't you choose everything everywhere all at once for editing? And I thought to myself, hmm, well, that is a good choice. And then I thought about it more and I said, well, they're going to choose everything everywhere for this and that and, and inevitably screenplay, which I didn't predict. And... Yeah, it may have a good chance uh, with editing. I, I thought for sure they would either go Top Gun Maverick, they would go The Way of Water, they could go Babylon. I just didn't know if they were going to give everything everywhere the love in the majority of the categories that it was nominated in, and that was the case here. It makes a lot of sense. I think the editing in Everything Everywhere is really, really great. I would place it second or third personally on that list. I'm just glad it didn't go to Elvis. No offense to Elvis. I enjoyed Elvis, but best editing? I don't know. I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm glad it didn't happen. Production design? This one was tough, and it's one that I almost pivoted on. I said, are they going to really give it to Avatar? Because that was my prediction. Uh, because they could look at it and say, yeah, and I say they. I was a part of the voting body, too. Uh, they could look at it and be like, yeah, it's a lot of CGI. So are they really going to go with Avatar? And inevitably, they didn't. They went with Babylon, which has fantastic production design. But I am shocked that this one production design and not score, and then Tar got score, and this could have been really any of these films. Regardless, I am happy with the winner because the production design in Babylon was great, but I do think they looked at Avatar and they said, oh, visual effects, which isn't entirely the case it is still production design, but it makes sense. Cinematography, they did it. I thought they would do the thing, and I've been seeing a lot of people, and I mean across the board, a lot of people just look down on Top Gun Maverick cinematography. And because critics, they're the most snarky of the people. I include myself in that. I tend to be snarky. Uh, because they're the most snarky, I was like, ah, well, they're definitely not giving it to Top Gun, uh, even though it deserves it. And that was my choice of what should have won. That was my personal vote. I'm like, they won't do Top Gun. They won't do Avatar because of the visual effects. What are they going to give it to? Eh, the Fablemans, Babylon, Tar, something that feels more normal for the Critics' Choice. But they went with Top Gun Maverick. And the fact that Critics' Choice went Top Gun Maverick, tells me it's got the best chance at the Oscars right now. And I'm really happy the voting body kind of came together on this one and said, hey, we do agree that Top Gun Maverick does have phenomenal cinematography. Again, I feel like I'm alone in this, but clearly I'm not because it won the award tonight. So critics, hey, if you love Top Gun cinematography, reach out to me. I'd be happy to talk about it. The screenplay categories. Adapted, easy. All day long. Women talking. I don't know what else would have even had a shot there. I guess Glass Onion, because it got comedy, because it did get ensemble, that had a shot, right? But Women Talking had to win for screenplay. I mean, you just watch that movie and the first thing that pops out, it's the screenplay. The cast is great, but it's the screenplay. So that was easy. Here's what shocked me. Original screenplay, everything everywhere, one over the Banshees of Inishirin. I knew After Sun wouldn't win. I thought it would, you know, maybe could be a sneaky option here. Everything Everywhere won. So I'm starting to get Get Out versus Three Billboards vibes. You remember a couple of, years, more than a couple, remember a handful of years ago when they literally split down the middle and one movie got all of these, the other movie got all of those, and inevitably it was a toss-up on what was going to win. I was so confident 
in Banshees up until this. And now looking back on it, I'm like, okay, everything everywhere, one screenplay here, here, and here. And we've still got the Writers Guild. We've still got BAFTA. So we've got a while to decide. But if it continues to split evenly, it's going to be a toss-up come Oscar season. And I can't wait for that. Best Ensemble, Glass Onion. And I believe I said in my video, you know, you look at movies like Banshees and everything everywhere. Those are the two films that are going to be the discussion. And, and technically, now I do appreciate that they did go probably with the right choice here. I would personally choose everything everywhere. But when you go down the line and look at all of the actors' names in Glass Onion, and I said it before the year even started, I said this is going to be one of the most stacked casts of the entire year. Then yeah, it makes a lot of sense why Glass Onion won, but I was surprised that Glass Onion won because, again, we look at the ensemble, we look at the names, but then we look at the performances, how they mesh together, and how it all comes together because of that cast. I thought Everything Everywhere edged it out. I also thought Banshees would edge it out, but they went with what was technically the most stacked cast of names, and no one's denying that. So I guess it's not too shocking, but I was still a little surprised. Best Director. I, I thought I was going outlandish by choosing the Daniels over James Cameron, over Steven Spielberg, over the names that are more recognizable. But now I'm looking at this and I'm like, no, critics loved everything everywhere. I'm surprised it didn't win for Best Ensemble, but everywhere else, <laughs> everything everywhere else, it just kept winning. And this is a beloved movie with critics. We all know this. It's one of the highest rated movies on Letterboxd, Rotten Tomatoes of last year. But it just kept racking up. So as the award ceremony was going on, I'm like, oh yeah, well, the Daniels, I mean, they have to win at this point. So I'm glad I chose them. They are my personal favorites here. But again, I, I wouldn't have been too surprised if Spielberg would have surprised us. Young actor, actress, Gabriel LaBelle, this is an obvious one because he played a young version of Spielberg, sort of, in this movie, but I thought he knocked it out of the park. He was my choice. I think he gave genuinely one of the better performances of the year. Best Supporting Actress. And then Best Supporting Actor. I guess we can lump these two together because Kihi Kwan, come on, he's going to win the Oscar. It's set. It's in stone. At this point, he's going to win the Oscar, seeing his reaction when he got called again tonight. The name keeps getting called, and he's happy, he's content, he's so surprised every single time. It makes me smile, it makes my heart warm. Supporting actress, though, Angela Bassett. I was feeling really good after the Golden Globes, that's why I chose her uh, to win Supporting Actress at the Critics' Choice, but part of me was like, okay, huh? it's still, still questionable whether... No, she's going all the way to not as confident as I am in Supporting Actor, but I am very confident in Supporting Actress. And at this point, Bassett is the front runner. It's going to take a lot to knock her down. Actress and actor. I was right down the middle. Michelle Yeoh, Kate Blanchett, Michelle. I ended up going Kate Blanchett. I'm glad I did. She won. I said Tar has to get something because there's no chance it gets anything else. Except for score, apparently. Still. I can't believe that happened. But Kate Blanchett got her tar. Okay. Best actor. They didn't go with my, my choice here because... Oh, I'm sorry. They didn't go with my prediction. My choice was Brendan Fraser. He is my favorite performance of the year in this category. And that's what they inevitably went with. Which tells me there is more of a shot for Brendan here for the Oscar than I thought there was before watching the ceremony tonight, because I thought for sure critics love Colin Farrell. He's won every single place and all these smaller critics awards. So inevitably you get to the big one and you're like, yeah, Colin Farrell's going to win. Eh? 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 No, Brendan Fraser won. So now I'm sitting back going, okay, Butler's still got a shot. Colin Farrell's got a shot. Brendan's still got a shot. It's a three-way. This is going to be one of the most exciting best actor races I've ever seen. And to see it play out at the Oscars, I can't wait to see who wins. And finally, best picture. You know what my vote was. My vote was Top Gun Maverick, but I didn't think it had a chance. A chance in the world to win this category. What I was torn between, really three movies. The Fablemans, eh, not as much of a shot. Banshees, everything everywhere. Banshees, everything everywhere. I thought, well, they would go with Banshees for screenplay and give it some love in other places and then maybe just give everything everywhere a best picture. They gave 
Everything Everywhere Best Picture. Banshee's got no love. Banshee's got nothing at this ceremony, which, again, really surprised me. But, man, the love for Everything Everywhere All at Once is so strong. I'm not saying it's a front runner. I didn't say it after the Golden Globes. I'm not saying it here. But I'm saying the competition is going to be tough between three movies. The Fablemans, Everything Everywhere, and Banshees. They're going to be all fighting for that best picture spot. I can't wait to see BGAs. I can't wait to see BAFTAs. A lot of these things have yet to be determined. Front runners, you know, those final two slots for best picture. We're still working on that. I'm going to have some Oscar predictions for you guys this week. Just a first batch of Oscar predictions before we get some of these big guns, these other awards ceremonies. So it's going to be a tough batch of predictions, but I can't wait to bring all this to you guys. Thanks so much for watching this video, for supporting this channel, for being here for an award show that I got to vote in, man. So cool. But again, I wouldn't be here without your all support. And this is so much fun to do. Thanks for sticking with me, keeping me patient through all of the trials of life. And uh, let's go celebrate the movies that won these awards tonight. See you soon.